Today I'm going to share how I batch painted 98 Tyranid miniatures in my Stinger Hive Fleet colours. And it's coming right up. <laughs> Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Right, here we go. I'm going to paint 98 miniatures in my Stinger Hive Fleet Tyranid colours. I've got two halves of the Leviathan box set Tyranids and a couple of extra Ripper Swarms, which I'll talk about more in a minute. First colour to go down is Snakebite Leather. Now this is an old Games Workshop name. I started my Tyranids a long time ago when we had the old Games Workshop colours. However, of course, GW have discontinued all of those colours and the new colours aren't quite the same. So I'm actually using Vallejo Game Colour Paints, which is basically the old Games Workshop paints in these pots. So snake bites leather is first and of course we're painting some new miniatures which I've never painted before and a lot of these new miniatures have a lot more detail than my old Tyranid so I'm not a hundred percent sure exactly where I'm going to be laying these colours. My paint scheme is black and yellow and of course I did prime all of these miniatures first with black and then I went over the miniatures with a watered down black paint so that when I touched up any of the yellow colours, I would be touching up with the original black base coat colour. So I started off with two coats of snake bites leather and I went over the bits that I knew would be this colour and that would be the hoofs, the claws, the talons and the carapace sections on the back. I'm going to be mainly showing you my Screamer Killer Carnifex here, but I was going to batch paint all of the miniatures together, so I went over all of the areas that I knew would be this colour first. Now the reason why I've got two extra ripper swarms is because I wanted to have the maximum amount of rippers in my army. I've currently got 10. I've got five with five rippers on the base and five with four rippers on the base. And I thought it would be nice to have three units of six. So I did two bases, one with five on and one with four on to give me two units of six there. And then for the new rippers in this set, I split them out to three on a base. So I have six with three on a base. That gives me the maximum amount of rippers that you can take. So continuing on with Snake Bites Leather and I did some of the extra details starting with the carapaces on the legs. I have this little pattern which starts on the outside and sort of goes into a point in the middle. I just worked my way through all the carapace sections where I was going to have this pattern. Now some of the really small miniatures like the Neurogants and the Termagants I don't actually have much of this pattern on there. I keep them quite basic because of course there's so many to paint. But some of the more bigger, interesting miniatures I add more detail to. And again, I did two coats of this area as well. Now the Flying Tyranid Prime of course has wings. So I've painted all of the wing areas in this color as well. Okay, so next, and this is the fun part, I do my Stinger Hive Fleet pattern on the bigger carapace areas. My idea behind this, I'm trying to make them look like insects, trying to make them look more dangerous. And what I do is I paint these sort of insectoid type squiggly patterns on the carapace, just to try to enhance the miniatures a little bit more, make them more interesting. Again, I do two coats of this pattern and I just line in these squiggly patterns and just try to make them even on both sides, not sort of 100% symmetrical, but as symmetrical as I can make them. Now I only do this pattern on the models which have bigger carapace sections or are more important, like maybe some of the HQ type characters. All of the small bugs don't get this pattern. Okay, so we're on to the next layer, which is three parts snake bite leather and one part sunburst yellow. And I basically repeat everything that I've done, two layers, and what I do is I just leave the original coat in the recessed areas. So it's still there, but of course it's mainly covered with this second coat. Now it's fair to say this coat doesn't make a huge amount of difference to the uh, actual visuals of the miniatures. It hardly looks like I've painted it, but it does build up a nice consistency of colour and gets me ready for the next layer, which I call 
the pop layer. Okay, onto the pop layer, and this time we're using one part snake bites leather, one part sunburst yellow, and one part white. I'm then literally going to paint a third layer, uh, this time again, leaving the other two layers which I've painted still exposed. So this is going to go on the outer edges. I'm going to use a smaller paint brush for this, of course, as well. Now, in terms of the wings, what I did is I actually put a wash on the wings that had the original two colours. So I used a sepia wash, and then when that was dry, I dry brushed over with this pop colour. Uh, that's how I do my wings. It's quite basic, but it seems to work. It gives them sort of a leathery type look, which I really like. And then we're on to the bigger talons and spikes, which I tend to blend rather than layer because it just looks much nicer. I'm using a technique called feathering. Now this technique is pretty simple to do. It's a lot easier than wet blending. It's a lot quicker than glazing. Basically all you do is you take your paint and you put it into the areas where you want the paint to actually visually be. And then you take the paint off of your brush and then you just spread the paint into the area where you don't sort of want the paint. And then you get a bit of a transition. Now you do have to do this transition about three times, maybe four times, depending on how big the piece is. But certainly not as many times as if you were glazing with a really thin paint. This paint is watered down, but it's not watered down to the consistency of a glaze, it's just a thin paint. And again, I've done that all over the miniatures and these are starting to pop. However, we haven't finished with this colour. So what I do is on the bigger scything talons that we've just blended and also the teeth, I continue to highlight them with a lighter colour. I don't do this on all of the yellow that we've painted, just on the talons and the teeth. And that's because in my mind's eye, the talons and teeth would be a sharp instrument. The teeth would be really sharp and the talon blades would be really sharp. And I think having those highlighted more than the rest of the carapace really gives that image of them being dangerous. So I add more white to the mix and again, I do feathering. So I start right on the tip and I just feather that into the previous layer that I did. Now regarding the teeth, I just paint each tooth separately with a very small paintbrush with this colour. Now once this was done, I added more white to the mix, actually three more parts of white. So we've got a really bright yellow here. And then I painted exactly the same. I painted on the teeth and on the tips of the talons. And then the yellow is done. Okay, so next it's red, which is my third colour on these miniatures. It's my little accentuation colour as such. It uh, just brings the miniatures to life with a different colour. And I'm using Mechrite Red. Now again, these miniatures are very different to what I've had before. I mean, we have smoke coming out of these vents. Uh, so I thought, why not just paint this smoke red, along with, of course, all of the tongues. Now the bases do have some extra stuff on uh, that are attached to the miniatures. I tried to paint some of this material red, but I didn't like it. I didn't want to add too much red to the miniatures because my red is very minimal, generally. So I actually left all of the basing material black, which matches the rest of my army. I then proceeded to highlight the red. I just did layers on the tongues. However, I used some dry brushing techniques on the brains and also on the smoke. So I started first of all with a coat of blood red. Then I did blood red with white, a 50-50 mix. Then I did blood red with two parts white. And then finally, right at the end, I did a little white dot on the ends of the tongues. And the minis are really starting to come together now. Now in terms of this paint scheme, of course it is quite basic, black and yellow. However, what really helps bring these miniatures to life are the bases, so stay tuned to see how that turns out. First though, I had to paint the eyes. So I went into the eyes first with scarab red, then I did a white dot in the center of the eyes. And this really does bring the miniatures to life. Having eyes, I'd 100% recommend that you do paint the eyes, or at least on the miniatures that have eyes, because of course some of these miniatures don't actually have eyes. 
I then added a few rocks to some of the bases, not that many. I keep my bases, again, quite simple. This is supposed to be a quick and easy paint scheme for these Tyranids. Even though it took me three months to paint these 98 miniatures, it would have taken me a lot longer if I'd had a more difficult paint scheme. Okay, so next we've got to tidy everything up because of course we have been doing some dry brushing and you know, sometimes you accidentally put paint where you don't want it to be. So I got the black paint out and I went over each miniature, just tidying up the paint job with the black paint. Now this of course did include painting the black areas on the wings, which did take some time and a steady hand. This layer is very important to really finishing the miniatures off. Next, I put some PVA glue on and of course put some sand on the bases and let that fully dry. So next is to paint the sand. I used desert yellow. I actually used quite a watered down mix, I would say uh, one to one with water and then I just painted this over the sand. Having it quite watery meant it would flow quite easily and I wouldn't get the paint too thick on the base so that you could really see the sand detail. Sometimes if you paint too thick over the sand, you can hardly see the sand anymore. So make sure you do thin your paints. So once that was dry, I then went over all of the sand with a sepia wash. This wasn't a watered down one, it was straight out of the pot. Of course, I made sure that the wash was nicely spread out so I got an even finish. All I had to do then was paint the rims of the bases. Again, I went for black and I did two thin coats of this paint. And then finally, I just added a few little brown tufts to some of the bases. Not that many, just here and there. I tried to put the tufts next to rocks because I just think aesthetically it sort of works. I think that's where the tufts would be. And that's them finished. I'm really happy how they came out. So they match into my army really nicely. And these new Tyranid miniatures are very cool indeed. Now, as I said, here is the video about how to feather, if you're interested in watching that. I've got a whole series about all different painting techniques, which I'll link just there for you. And you may have noticed that some of these miniatures are converted. So I'll link you up to the Timnid conversion video just there. Uh -huh.